It just does. It does. And I know you're likely thinking right now that you disagree. It's completely safe to use GitHub Copilot and other AI coding tools. And I understand that. But have you heard of the broken windows theory? Oh, you haven't? It states that visible signs of crime, antisocial behavior, and civil disorder collectively create an environment that encourages further crime and disorder. Right here in the book. So if your development environment, your project is riddled with signs of vulnerabilities, code disorder, and anti-patterns, you're encouraging Copilot and any AI coding tools for that matter to create more of that. You likely don't know all the vulnerabilities in your code, but Copilot sees your code and amplifies these issues in its suggestions to you. You see, the thing is, AI coding tools like Copilot imitate learned patterns and utilize available context, which is great for the suggestions being relevant to what you need, but it does so without providing judgment. And this is where the problem lies. It's what makes using AI coding tools a security risk. You might be still skeptical and thinking, how can this actually happen? Let me show you. All right, so here's a demo application that's about booking a conference, and it wants to be able to show people talks when they search for a certain term. So we have this API endpoint here, called search talks, and I haven't implemented this method just yet. So I'm gonna control click into here, and this is where I'm gonna use GitHub Copilot to help me implement this functionality. And I'm gonna use it to generate a query to my database to actually return the talks based on the search. Okay, so we're gonna delete this return null and start writing our own code. And we're gonna use Copilot via comments to tell it what to do. So I want it to lowercase the input. I hit enter. Okay, it gives me what I want, I hit press tab. All right, so next up, I'm gonna write a comment to tell the AI to write a query for me. So create a native query to search for talks joined with the person table with the input in the description, title or speaker username, enter. There we go. Now we have a query for that and I hit tab. So next up, I wanted to execute the query. Awesome, and then return the result. Excellent. So now if you have a keen eye and you have some security background, you likely already know what the problem is, but let's say you don't, I'm gonna use sneak to help me identify what's going on here and why this might be an issue with the code copilot generated for me. So I'm gonna enable sneak here in my extensions. If you don't have it already, you can go to the extensions view. This is in VS code, but any editor that you're using right now, you can use it as well. Make sure it's enabled and installed. You sign into your sneak account and you're good to go. You come over to the sneak tab. I'm going to tell it to run code security scan right here. And now we can see we have three vulnerabilities. Now in the home controller, there's a SQL injection problem. And right there on line 40 of that API, where we implemented the search talk method, we can see sneak is telling us about a SQL injection problem. You unsanitized user input is being provided from an HTTP parameter. No good. Now this was obviously intentional to make the point. And you're likely thinking you'll never write vulnerable code like that. And well, good for you. But the reality is you can, and you might, it can easily happen to the best of us. And with many other types of typical vulnerabilities found in software development. I mean, just take a look at the OWASP top 10 list. So what can you do about it? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. First, developers should conduct manual reviews of AI-generated code, including comprehensive security assessments, just like you would do with human-generated code. Security teams should implement SAS guardrails, or static application security testing, to identify and rectify security issues quickly. You can use tools like Sneak, like I just showed you, for both manual and AI-generated code, and then development teams can work within those guardrails, leveraging these tools. As you can see in our example from earlier, Sneak actually is giving me some suggested fixes in these community results. We have an example one right here, example two, different ways that I can approach avoiding SQL injection in this case. Now developers should adhere to secure coding guidelines that are established by the security and development teams together. From there, security teams can provide necessary training and awareness on common security vulnerabilities and best practices. So security teams should also prioritize and triage the backlog of security issues focusing on the most dangerous ones. And last but not least, executive teams should mandate security guardrails for using AI code assistance. That way it increases awareness and education about the risks and mitigation. So in conclusion, while AI coding assistants offer productivity boosts, they require security guardrails. 
you can combine AI tools with traditional AppSec techniques for a balanced approach to innovation and security. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, you can actually read our full blog post on it. The link is in the description below. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with someone who could put it to use. And as always, if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding everyone.